of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Be seated. Well, today is referred to as Good Shepherd Sunday, and obviously from the Gospel reading uh, from St. John, 10th chapter, our Lord describes himself as the Good Shepherd, and we, uh, the sheep. Now, I know in um, clergy like to joke about, in, you know, in seminary, and, and also we joke about it here, too, that if God was comparing us to sheep, that's really not very flattering uh, to be compared to sheep because, you know, sheep aren't the brightest animals in the world. And this reminds me of a story of what happened last October when I was invited uh, by Sharon, uh, who runs the farm, Farm Buddies, up there in northwest Las Vegas off of, I think it's Farm Road and uh, Buffalo, roughly. And so anyway, uh, she said, please, can you come, Father, and, and, and say a prayer over my, my donkey, who I love so much. I've known him 40 years, taken care of him. He's a rescue animal. All those animals at the farm are rescue animals, over a 1,000 animals. And so I went there and prayed over the donkey. It was feeling better shortly after the prayer, got up and ate, and uh, she was just so thrilled. And then she took me on a tour, sharing of the entire complex, 10 acres over a thousand acres. I had never seen such peace among animals before. You had roosters walking next to cats. I mean, how often do you see that? Uh, you had pigs that would come out and greet Sharon uh, from their stalls. You would have cows that would come up to her and, you know, from, the, from their stalls too and want to have their, their head rubbed. Or you would see snapping turtles. Of course, we avoided those. But anyway, it was, it was incredible. And then the horses too, and then you had uh, the uh, you know those the goats. They they were uh, all hanging around a share into what was remarkable is she truly is like a shepherd of animals of Las Vegas, because each of those animals have been in dire circumstances, or at the point of being uh, dying on the streets or wherever, being cruelly mistreated by their owners, and so they recognized in her someone who loved them was willing to rescue them. So they would follow her all over the place. And so I, especially this goat named Samantha. And that goat went everywhere with us. And it was incredible. But what I wanted to see were the sheep. Because you don't hear about sheep. And I tell you, when I came upon that stall with all those sheep, they are the most stoic, indifferent, move, I mean, they are motionless animals just sitting there chewing on the grass or whatever they do. And they're just like, you go near them, they don't do anything, they don't move or anything. And so I thought, if I just put my hand through there and maybe tip them over, they would fall over. And I think they would have done that. I mean, they just wake up or do something. Uh, and so really our Lord, when he's saying we are like sheep, in this regard we are. Because like those sheep, we are completely defenseless. We are completely dependent upon the one who is taking care of them. And that is the, good, the shepherds of, you know, in Jerusalem, Israel. But also God really... We are so dependent upon him for all things. And, uh, you know, those who say, I don't need God. You know, I, I can do this. I can do, you know, I can, I'm fine on my own. You're weak if you need God because, you know, you just need a crutch. You know, you're a weakling. Hey, I'll take that crutch and more, you know, to get through this life. Because we know in a moment's notice, any tragedy can hit us like that. We can be stripped of our health, we can be stripped of our income, we can be stripped of our friends, we can be stripped of all things and realize that we are nothing without God. And so having that realization made me think of those sheep and also of another story of a, a movie, a documentary I saw last year too, I think it was November, and it was a biblical archaeologist doing an expose on shepherds in Israel. Now, I had never, this is the most incredible thing. There was this shepherd with over 100 sheep following him up this little hill, and there was one sheep that decided, I'm gonna go my way. And so he bolts from the rest of the sheep from the shepherd, and then he gets about 30 yards down the hill, and then he stops right there in his tracks, and then he turns his head and looks at the shepherd. Then he turns his head the other way and looks out into the unknown, and then he makes his decision. He says, I'm going for it, he bolts, and then he goes out into, 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 into the wilderness. And what would you know? He got lost and he was prey to animals that could have attacked him like the coyotes or, or wolves. And so the shepherd went after him, brought him back. Now, what does that tell us about us being like sheep? We have, like those sheep, we can obey or disobey. And when we disobey, what happens? We get into all kinds of trouble. Do we not? 
And so just like that, maybe that sheep didn't want to go up that hill. Maybe he had some arthritis in the knees. Or maybe he thought, you know, look, I'm tired of walking and, and I want some food now. But our Lord promises that he will provide for us all of our needs if we put our trust and faith in him to follow him, the good shepherd. <clears throat> now, what is it about uh, our Lord Jesus that he knows that we don't know? Now, that being God, the good shepherd, he is what? He is om, uh, omniscient. So when Jesus says in chapter 10 of John, verse 14, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. Now, do you and I know what's going to happen to us the rest of the day? No, we don't. But does God know what's going to happen to us the rest of the day? Yes, he does. He knows our every thought. He knows our every movement. He knows what's going to happen when we draw our last breath because he is outside of time and space and also he is transcendent and imminent. He is among us right now in time and space. So what does Psalm 139 say? It says, our Lord knows us. He, he knows that he, compasseth, he compasseth my path and my lying down and he is acquainted with all my ways. So you see, God knows us and he knows what's best for us if we just trust and follow him. But the, the thing is, is that on our own, we can't do it. But the good news is, is that God is omnipotent as well. That means he is all powerful. You know, the great message is that our salvation is just not a one-time event. We are continually being saved. And the more we abide in him and he in us and recognize that, that we have this power that formed all the universe, that created every star, every plant, every tree, every soul, is in Christ Jesus, he abides in us. We are the temple of God. That power that Jesus Christ is abiding in us, and so therefore we have a limitless power that no one else has if you're apart from Christ Jesus. So when times get difficult, when you begin, I'm going to bolt, I'm not going to, you know, I'm, I'm feeling down, people have been uh, talking bad about me, or, you know, I, I've, I've lost my job, or my, my son or daughter is rebelling against me. It is during these times not to resort to those things which cannot satisfy and fill that need when we're in that desperation. Only Jesus, the good shepherd, can provide for us. And so the other beautiful thing is, is that the power behind that is love. God's power mm -hmm. is demonstrated most fully in this cross. In other words, that is the full measure of his love and his power. So in other words, when we're, we're at our worst, when we disobey him, when we obey him, he still embraces us with his love. He will never let us go. No matter what we do, what we say, what we think, his love is always there and we can always return to him in a moment's notice. And that's the other, the third thing is, is he is what? Omnipresent. In other words, he is everywhere. But in a particular place here at St. George's, in a, in a real and tangible way, on the altar in the blessed, in the breaking of bread, he has made known to us the risen Christ in the Eucharist. So therefore, if he is everywhere and we can <clears throat> tap into him and, and talk with him at any time, what he desires more than anything is relationship. What he desires more than anything is communion with us. And so that is why really the, the whole gospel story and the, 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 the history of salvation and God entering into history, it is a divine love story. How much does he love us? Think of a marriage. He compares it to what? He being the bridegroom and we the bride. In other words, even the tabernacle in the Old Testament uh, temple was in the shape and form and the tapestry, everything was meant to be the bridal chamber. That is the type of love he has and wants with us. So therefore, you and I can talk to him at any time of the day. I encourage it. I'm trying to do that. So when we do that, we can converse with him like we would with our spouse. Now, as our spouse, over the years, get to know us a little better, hopefully we've got to learn how to forgive and be forgiven. How, oftentimes we have to learn to say, did you really do that? Okay, I forgive you. And that is the message that our Lord Jesus says, is that you must turn to me in order to forgive like I forgive. And so we can talk to our Lord Jesus just like that, just like a spouse. That type of love means that truly he is one who cares for us, will never abandon us, will never let us go. And so therefore, you and I can return to the bishop and shepherd of our souls. We should do it not every year, not once a month, not once a day, not once an hour, but every moment of every day. 
And when we do, we will find that we are brought to those green pastures where we find peace, serenity, removal of fear, and we find that contentment that only He can fulfill in our hearts. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.